Hey, what's up guys? My name is JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel. We're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to do a little bit of experimenting. Um, sorry, I've got a really squeaky chair. It's a, it's a budget chair. My girlfriend got it for me uh, for Christmas a long time ago and it was very sweet of her. Um, but I've spent so many hours in this chair, there's no cushion left on the bottom. But i got to change that. Anyways, moving on to what we have over here. i got the light show back over here. Um, that's the rise and build. So today, what we're going to be doing is pushing the limits of the Ryzen 1700 with the stock cooler, the the Ryzen Wraith Spire. I believe it's the Spire. It's called. Um, I know this isn't the brightest idea, but um, a lot of people were like, "What the heck, man? You you got a you got a stock cooler in that build?" And um, the cooling potential is almost the same as a Hyper 212 Evo from what I've seen from other reviews. I might do a review on it as well, but this is kind of giving an incentive to how far AMD has pushed um, their level of quality, not only into the processor, but also the uh, stock cooler, which is huge. You know, I, I didn't have the money to spend an extra $30 on a Hyper 212 Evo or $90 or $80 on the Noctua uh, CPU fan cooler or even a hundred on the Corsair H110. So um, yeah, we're gonna test the limits of this. We're gonna overclock it, of course. Right now it's running at uh, 3.8 gigahertz on the stock cooler. Yeah, sorry, my setup is looking a little cluttered right now. I got one PC over here, another PC down here. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna change some settings around, we're gonna push the limits of this bad boy. I think it's running at 1.3 volts right now, maybe 1.35, I'm not, quite too sure. Let's get into it and let's see how far we can push this thing. And we will be running a, a, a test bench on uh, Cinebench. We'll be running a benchmark on Cinebench. So anyways, moving on, let's get into it. All right, so we got this bad boy running at 3.8 gigahertz right here. Um, we're gonna run Cinebench right now. Now I've heard a couple things about um, the Ryzen software not being accurate with the temperatures. That's why I have a couple different monitoring programs. So it's saying we're running about 30, around 37 degrees Celsius. And for the CPU on CPU ID, it says right about at 37, 38. So pretty close to what AMD Ryzen Master is. So um, these are pretty close numbers. I'm gonna ensure that those are fairly accurate. Okay, so let's run up Cinebench. And now we're running about 3.79 gigahertz. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there, 3.79 gigahertz. Okay, we're running about 3.75 gigahertz, even though the max speed is 3.8. Um, and then we got a CPU score of 1,628 CB. Not too bad. So I kind of failed at showing you guys what the temps were when I was running at 3.8. So I did the test once again, and the uh, OS is telling me it's running at 3.79, whereas AMD Ryzen Master is telling me at 3.82. Now we can see the temps getting here in the upper or lower 80s, about around 85 degrees Celsius, I think is where it maxes out at. And then it kind of drops back down. And then we get a CPU score of 1,603 CB for uh, Cinebench. So we can see the temps here getting to the mid 80s, which is still pretty high, but very decent for a stock cooler running it at 3.8 gigahertz. But let's push it a little bit further. All right, so we're gonna go into advanced frequency settings. And right now we have it set at 3.82. Let's set that to 3.92. So 3.92 gigahertz. Oh, it's set at 1.4. Okay. Oh, well, we're gonna set at 1.45 and keep it there. And we're gonna save and escape. Now I know 1.45 might seem like a little much right now, but uh, like I said, we're just pushing this to the limits, seeing how well that fan actually cools. Now, of course, we're only running very short benchmarks. So we're not running this for extensive periods of time. But just to see that we can run these benchmarks um, while under these really high um, frequencies on a stock cooler nonetheless, I think is still an impressive feat. So let's get back into it. Uh, why'd I make this password so long? So right now it's running at 3.85 gigahertz. I'm gonna get you guys in on the action. Okay, so right now we're running at around 3.8 uh, gigahertz. 
max speed is 3.92. Um, let's load up the Ryzen master software and also CPU ID. Okay, so 43 degrees Celsius idling at around 3.8 uh, gigahertz. Right now it's at 1.3, but load up Cinebench. We might have a different story. 3.8, 3.89. Will it push any harder? 3.89. Come on. Break the 3.9 gigahertz threshold. So we're at 3.89. That's about our max right there. And let's see what our temps are. Our temps are spiking at around uh, 80 degrees Celsius. I don't know if you guys can see that. Ugh. There you go. The max rated temperature for this, is, I think, is 95 degrees Celsius. And we got 1,655. Okay, yeah, so we got 1655 for that. Now, once again, I kind of failed at showing you guys what the temps were when I ran it at 3.9. So I did the test once again. The task manager is reading 3.89 and AMD Ryzen Master is uh, reading 3.92. Um, still that discrepancy, I'm gonna go with the lower number, just a low wallet. It's gonna reach at 89 degrees Celsius at its peak and then cool back down. So I do not recommend trying to overclock the Ryzen 1700 with the stock cooler over 3.8 gigahertz, um, at least with Cinebench. Anything longer than Cinebench that's gonna really burn in your CPU, it's probably gonna run even hotter. Four gigahertz. We're gonna put the voltage setting up at 1.5, which is incredibly ridiculous. I don't think you should ever run your CPU at 1.5 volts, but <laughs> we're doing it for the sake of the video. Maximum speed is 3.99 and we are running at 3.99. Let's see if we can just get that Cinebench to start working. We're gonna run. And we got a blackout. 3.89 is as far as we're gonna get for right now. But um, I'm gonna try to tinker with it a little bit more and record that. I actually managed to get it up to 4.1 gigahertz while idling at 71 degrees Celsius, which is incredibly hot for idling. So I don't recommend going anywhere past 3.8. Like I said before, where it was at 4.1 gigahertz, I couldn't even get to the desktop. Um, so that was that was hardcore. Uh, you know that was bad for the computer. It kept freezing up. I had to clear out the BIOS configuration and reset it just to have it boot up. So I messed around with it a little bit more. I set it to 4.1 gigahertz and 1.55 volts. I would have to push it to 4.1 for it to reach to four gigahertz, if that makes any sense. Because as we saw, it was reaching 3.89, but not the full 3.9. Um, I will go ahead I will go ahead and say, yeah, this thing can get to 3.9 gigahertz if cooled properly and with um, future um, BIOS updates. Now I am running the latest version of the BIOS on the Gigabyte AX370 board. So that is all settled, they are done, and all the drivers are up to date as well. This is just a stock fan, and we were seeing a, a max temp of 80 degrees Celsius while we were running the Cinebench uh, benchmark. Now it's very short, very intense, but still, it, it managed to, to run it at 3.9 gigahertz on the stock fan, so I thought that was pretty cool. Here's another thing, I'm waiting on doing my Ryzen 1700 review, simply because I just wanna give it time. You know, um, it's, it's not like reviewing a Bluetooth speaker. Bluetooth speakers have been around for a while now. The process is refined. Same thing with Intel CPUs. It's a refined processor. AMD Ryzen still relatively new. Um, the motherboard is relatively new. Well, yeah, it's brand new. But there's just a lot that needs to be refined before I feel like I can make a, a, a true assumption on it. By no doubt, I do think this is a great value for your money. 16 threads for $320, and I, I, I'm I, pushing this thing at 3.9 gigahertz on the stock cooler. That's a lot for just getting what you got out of the box, so I am incredibly impressed by that. So if that says anything to you guys, um, it, it, it's definitely something very positive, and I feel very strongly about AMD now. And I, I ran these tests before too, before making this video, and I was, I was able to push 3.9 or 3.89 before. Um, 
I don't know if you guys consider that 3.9 or not, but me personally, I mean, it's 3.89 if you want to be technical. If you want to see more videos like this where we push certain pieces of hardware to the test, especially stock hardware, let me know and I could definitely do my job. So uh, yeah, anyways, I wanna thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if the camera angles were a little weird, but yes, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Why can't you see?